Have you been watching the hearings, by the way? <laughs> uh, I've been he on, watching on, what uh, Kevin O'Leary said. Did you yes, hear what he Kevin said? O that's exactly Can what I'm talking about. Can you play the clip? Play the clip and play it from yeah, the beginning. He calls out Binance. Play, open it up. Right press pause. Kevin and Kevin and start from the beginning. Crazy. Yeah, just I I'm curious to know what your take is on this, Tom, and everybody else that's watching this. I Go saw this it. yesterday. This is good. Go Why do you tune. believe FDX failed? I have an opinion. I don't have the records. Here it is. These two behemoths that own the unregulated market together and grow these incredible businesses in terms of growth were at war with each other. He's breathing hard. And one put the other out of business intentionally. Now, maybe there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe there's nothing wrong with love and war. But Binance is a massive, unregulated, global monopoly now. Yeah. They put FTX out of business. What are your thoughts on that? Pat? I want to hear your thoughts. Go ahead, Tom. Um, for, first of all, okay, let's say Binance did that. Set it aside. We just heard testimony from the acting CEO who's, who's working, trying to work through this on behalf of the U.S. magistrate and the bankruptcy, that these guys were moving customer assets from FTX to Alameda. We have the transaction numbers. We've seen the stuff moving. This wasn't stuff that was moving in crypto wallets and on the blockchain that can't be tracked. It was moving. So I'd like to know what part of Binance was putting them out of business that led to committing fraud where you take like money that belonged to a lot of very wealthy people and it was going from pocket A to pocket B to cover losses, number one. And number two, I would like to know what Mr. Leary's interest is in, in putting a dent in Binance. What is that all about? Well, first of all, do you know how much he got yeah. paid by FTX? Do you know what the amount is? No, I don't. $15 million. Yeah. That was his like... Uh, Oh, uh, like an influencer fee? Fifteen million dollars. Okay, so okay, so Kevin O'Leary, right, right there, right there. FTX spokesman Kevin O'Leary says he lost fifty million dollars payday from crypto firm. Because he had equity. Oh, okay. In so FTX. in other words, he That's wasn't in front of Congress as a impartial financial expert. Let's read the article. He was a <clears throat> lobbyist. Yeah. So investor Shark Tank judge and CMC contributor Kevin O'Leary said Thursday he has lost fifty million dollars. FTX paid him to act as a spokesperson. Uh, for the now collapsed crypto exchange that some have called fraudulent, O'Leary and other celebrities such as Tom Brady, Larry David were sued by FTX investors who said the exchange's ambassador should have done more due diligence and exercise a greater level of care before promoting the crypto empire. So, 50 million bucks. Total deal was just under 15 million dollars. I put about 9.7 million into crypto. I think that's what I lost. I don't know. It's all at zero. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts, Adam? Look, I. <laughs> This is all a cleansing. Okay, my, my question is... Cleansing? You yes. just went to ayahuasca? Like, what, what cleansing? Let, <laughs> you're, so I dealt with this in my industry, yeah. in the life insurance, life settlement industry yeah. in 2008. Everyone was getting into my industry in 2005, 2006, 2007. People were making so much money, okay? I got into the industry. I never made any money in my life. All of a sudden, I made 100 grand. This is amazing. Collapse. What had happened at that point was all the fraudulent bad actors got exposed. Elliot Spitzer, who was the attorney general of the New York, uh, he was calling out people. There were lawsuits, people that were doing fraudulent things. You said you went to a meeting in Waco, Texas one time, a group called Life Partners that were doing illegal shady stuff. They were stuff. publicly traded. They were publicly traded. He so had all these two mammoth and elephants in his headquarters. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like equivalent of like ridiculous Skeleton, Bahamas obviously. property. Yeah. But just, you know, so... These bad actors are going to get exposed, kind of what I was just talking about. It might take two years, it might take five years, it might take ten years. If you're doing shit the wrong way and you're doing illegal but stuff, I'm you're going to get exposed. But I'm asking about Kevin O'Leary. What are your thoughts yeah, about this? Yeah, but that's this? my point, is that ultimately, when, when you're talking... <clears throat> two things can be true at once. FTX can be doing fraudulent, ridiculous, illegal stuff, and at the same time, Binance can be doing things to put people out of business. You talk about how like you trust your competitors because you know they wake up every single day and their intention is to steal your market share and put you out of business. We understand that. So I think at the end of the day here, the big question is where does the industry go from here and where does regulation happen from here? So to draw my analogy is the best thing that happened for my industry our industry is that it became regulated. It went from the Wild West to a regulated industry. And now you take my firm for an example. We're at the top of the food chain in our industry because we played by the rules. We never were in the headlines. It's been regulated and everything's done the right so way. Let's, so let's, that, that's what I think needs to happen to crypto, some yeah, regulation. I, I, so is this a good look or a bad look for Kevin, the position he's taking? 
I think, I think he's bad. protecting himself. Okay. I think he looks like a lobbyist. Okay. So, okay, I, I, I don't think that's a good look. I, I don't think that's a good look for Kevin. Kevin has had a uh, uh, his uh, brand, what he's done, you know, where he's been, you know, tied to however many years on uh, – uh, what's Shark that show? Tank. Shark Tank. And by the way, I think he carries the weight on that show, and I think everybody was. The you know, you know, one guy on Shark but Tank. you know how they say TNT, NBA on TNT. Who's the main guy that really Charles changed Barkley. that? It's Charles Barkley, right? And I think yeah. for that, he's the Charles Barkley of Shark Tank. Okay, no, vice no, versa. He's on this mm-hmm. list, by the yeah, way. huh? Barkley's on this list. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. We're gonna go through that here in a minute. But I think that was a bad look. But let's set that aside. Okay, um, how much money is? What, how much money would you say would it take for you to say yes to a product you have zero belief in? Like, what at what point do we say no to a sponsorship? So, for example, let's just say hypothetically, okay, and our sponsor guy is sitting right here. So let's just say, how many times have I said no to you and you've told me about Pat, they're willing to spend X, Y, Z money? How many times? Many, many, many times. And by the way, as a, as a person who makes many money times. on the sponsor side, do you like that? That probably upsets you because you just got a big commission check. If I say yes to it, right? So it doesn't help our sponsor side. So these guys, this this company that runs this keto company, right? One of the biggest keto company in America, if not the biggest. And they send a bunch of stuff, and they are, they, they're diehard fans of uh, the podcast. And I love that. I got a lot of respect. Mm. I appreciate the support. And here's how much money they're going to give you. Okay, you want me to get and talk about keto? I'm lying. You know what I'm saying? I would be lying if I said keto diet changed my life. I would be lying if I did that. So there is a very interesting uh, position. Like, you know how some of the people are like, well, you know, this is how much money it would take. How how much money would it take for you to say yes to a product you have zero belief in to promote constantly? How much money? Like, let's say a product. I can be bought is what you're asking. (laughs) Yes, I can be bought. I Listen. love keto. The keto. keto king. How much did he pay me? <laughs> no, no, no. All no, no, I no, do no. is keto. But, 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 but by the way, I'm actually asking a very <laughs> real question. So tell me. A Everyone's pro- got a price. No, I don't. Saying. I don't agree with that. I don't agree. What? I, what? I what? Agree. What would you? Yeah. What would you? What is a product you'll never use? A car. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 but I, what's a product you would never use? Give me a product you would never, ever, ever use. Mm-hmm. Never use. For example, gambling companies. You know how much money gambling websites have given us? If I told you the number, you wouldn't believe it. No, I know. It's the kind of a number that's life-changing for 99.9% of people. Mm-hmm. Ask me how many I've said yes to. No, you've said no, it no, just no, doesn't no. make any sense for me to say yes right. to a gambling company. It's completely off of my brand to say yes, go yeah. to this gambling website. Now, by the way, Barstool does gambling. Of course they should say yes. Yeah. That's the brand. What do you mean you shouldn't say yes to that, right? So I think I think this is very tricky. Like you know, when we did Gold Call, I, I read the thing with Gold Call, right? Okay, and I'm like, dude, I, there's a risk. Any sponsor you take, there's a risk. You don't know what's going to happen with the founder. You don't know what's going to happen with you know a, a story comes out with like for example, like t- five years before what happened with the guy from Subway. What's the guy's name from Jared Subway? Fogel. Jared Fogel. Five years prior to that, you know, hey, this podcast is sponsored by. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I like their sandwich. Yeah. But then that comes out. Like, oh, now you're linked to that. So there is a risk in sponsorships that's taking place. A part of like, a part of a good sponsor's job is to present the opportunity of the money being made, as well as here's the dirt I found on them online. Wow. These are the lawsuits. Mm-hmm. This is the negative review here. Here's what I noticed here. Mm. It's very risky because you're sitting there. Tom Brady's sitting there with his team saying, guys, how come we didn't know something like this? Because they, they, the, they wanted the commission. They're giving they us this the much trip. money. They're giving us this. They're giving us. So th- this, this makes talent and influencers be more protective of what they say yes to, mm-hmm. no matter what the price tag is. Because here's the thing. You know how I said there's a dollar amount for everybody? I think there's a dollar amount for, and you fully believe that, that there's a dollar amount. I think for the majority of people, they can be bought. Whatever the number is, whatever it is, there is a number for everybody. And I will tell you this, if that's the mindset, you will have a very, very low Q score and a very, very low loyalty from customers that will keep coming back to see what you endorse and promote. You will lose credibility because if you become the, 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 the whore that's going around, you know, sponsor. What do you call it? Uh, uh, take Village sponsorship bicycle. money from everybody. Mm-hmm. Then what you're saying is, your audience is sitting there saying, "Dude, that's like the 99th one you just sponsored. Do you really use that? Do you really do that?" 
Why are you saying that? There's a li- so it's a tough relationship. And by the way, I'm not blaming the influencer. You know, I can only imagine what it's like to say, hey, here's 15 million bucks. Here's 5 million bucks. Mm-hmm. That's got to be tempting for a person to say yes, and especially tempting for smaller, you know, uh, uh, what We're do you just call gonna it? Influencers. Well, it, it, it goes both ways, too. Because, but Kevin's yeah. not small. Yeah. Kevin's got money. Well, here's my point. We have the luxury that, that this, we're here, Valuetainment, PBD Podcast, everything we do, is not our main source of income. Right. Correct, right? Yes. So you have PHP. Not even, have, not even close. Not even close. Yeah. So like we do this because we love it, we enjoy it, we appreciate the audience, yeah. we're building something, but this is not our main source of revenue. So we have the luxury to say, ah, it's not worth it because we are very selective. Yeah. I know I'm being very like, ah, everyone has a price, but we do have these discussions like, nah, this isn't a fit for us. And you're very selective with that, no doubt. But let's say this is your only thing and it's your only job and you're running a podcast and you're making no money, but you're whatever the career is, whatever it is, you're doing a show, a podcast, you're a TikToker, and this is your only source of revenue. It is very hard to be like, this guy wants to pay me a hundred grand to promote his keto thing. Yeah. Dude, I haven't made a hundred grand in my life. Sign me up for keto. A- Adam, you're right. That's the That's problem why- that people are going to run into. Sorry to cut you off there. You're right. But that's why so few people have the high Q scores. So few. And it goes the other way, too. Do you remember when Fiat hired J-Lo for their little tiny car? I think it's the 500 or the 5,000. It's a small car, very small car. And she's driving around, just driving around Brooklyn like where I grew up. Remember when I was a small mm-hmm. girl? That was all, that was false. People jumped on that and said, wait a minute. She didn't grow up there. She didn't grow up there. And she's also made comments about little small cars. And so there's a mismatch there. So she took the money. Mm -hmm. She was the wrong spokesperson. And it hurt Fiat the other way. They pulled the campaign out and they dropped it all off. And then you go the other side, Mm -hmm. who's got the high Q score? If you go back the last 15 years, one of the highest Q stores was Peyton Manning. And he was with Nationwide Insurance. He picked his spots. He had a lot of them out there, but he picked his spots and he used the product and he was straight with it. And he made money. Integrity doesn't know, also on the food chain, integrity doesn't care whether you are poor or rich. If you were at a small podcast and you took the money for some your rank product, then you're putting your integrity off to the side and you're not going to have the juice where you you want. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of Valuetainment. It says future looks bright here, future looks bright here. We got them in white, we got them in black, we got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan, bought one, then he bought three. Then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them because people wanted the future looks bright hat, especially during times like this, because ain't nobody saying future looks bright. To order your future looks bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.